Welcome everyone to this worship service, which has been organized by the Community of Christ Historic Sites Foundation. Tonight, March 27th, is the 188th anniversary of the dedication of the Kirtland Temple, which occurred on March 27th, 1836. This year, that anniversary comes with pain. As earlier this month, Community of Christ ended its almost 150 year long stewardship of the Kirtland Temple. I know that for many of us gathered here tonight, this ending has been very emotional and difficult. The purpose of tonight's worship service is to create a sacred space in which we can gather with mingled feelings of grief and gratitude to remember how God has blessed us by means of the Kirtland Temple. Words of counsel given to Community of Christ at the beginning of the 21st century urge us to recognize that we have been given a foundation of faithful service, even as we build a foundation for what is yet to be. Tonight, we will recognize ways in which the Kirtland Temple and things that happen there have given Community of Christ a foundation of faithful service. We will hold up and give thanks for experiences we have had individually and collectively in connection with the Kirtland Temple, experiences by which God has guided us and nurtured us and equipped us to serve others. So tonight we will pray and sing. We will hear re readings from scripture and from our faith community's history. Tonight, you will literally hear the voices of many individuals who've been connected to the Kirtland Temple, including past summer interns, volunteers, and site directors going back decades. We are so grateful, so grateful, to many people who are contributing to tonight's service. There are too many to mention them all now by name, but their names will appear on your screen at the end of the service, and we are forever grateful to them. In addition, you all have the opportunity tonight to contribute something uh, to this evening's service. At any time in the service, feel free to type into the chat your own grateful memories of the Kirtland Temple. How has the Kirtland Temple been, for you, a place of transformative encounter with the divine? How have experiences in connection with the Kirtland Temple soothed pain or brokenness in your life, or strengthened your faith, or filled you with excitement to serve, or maybe provided you with opportunities to minister? Please share your memories and thanksgivings in the chat, and we'll read some later tonight in the service. Be aware that this worship service will include a prayer for peace. If you'd like to get a candle ready to light at home when the time for that prayer comes. Our service will begin with a call to worship adapted from Psalm 84, which will be read by former Kirtland Temple interns and volunteers. We will then hear a recording of the hymn, Redeemer of Israel, that was specially prepared for this service by the talented Daniel Harmon. The words of the hymn will be displayed on your screen and you are invited to sing along from home or wherever you are tonight. After the hymn, an opening prayer will be read and the service will continue from there. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, it pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Near your altar, even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest to lay her young. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who live in your house. They are always praising you. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell 
in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is sun and shield. The Lord bestows grace and glory. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. Lord Almighty, blessed are those who trust in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the dry valley, it becomes a place of springs. The rain fills it with pools. They travel on, growing stronger and stronger, until they come to see Zion, or come to Zion and see God. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of my forebears. Redemption 
is near. Shall we bow? Loving God, eternal creator, you have told us that you yearn to draw us close so that you may heal our wounds, fill our emptiness, and strengthen our hope. We have not turned away from you. We come before you trusting that you seek only the best for us and those we love. We come to you with open hearts, hoping to discover anew the blessings of the gospel. We come to you in our vulnerability, open to your grace. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I say to you, my friends, organize yourselves and prepare a needful thing and establish a house a house of prayer, a house of fasting, a house of faith, a house of learning, a house of glory, and a house of order, a house of God, that your incomings and your outgoings may be in the name of the Lord. Let the lower part be dedicated to me for your sacrament offering and for your preaching and your fasting, and your praying, and for offering up to me your most holy desires, says your Lord. And let the higher part be dedicated to me for the school of my apostles. If my people build a house to me in the name of the Lord, my glory will rest upon it, and my presence will be there, for I will come into it. If Zion does these things, she will prosper, and the nations of the earth will say, Surely Zion is the city of our God, for God is there. The community of Christ began in the early 1800s as a small group of Christians calling themselves Latter-day Saints. The saints had embraced an ambitious call to mission a call to create a sacred community that would pursue Christian ministry on a worldwide scale. Like the ancient Israelites, the saints envisioned that their sacred community would be centered on a temple, a house of the Lord, a physical symbol that they were a people in community with God, dedicated to God's service. The saints envisioned that in their temple, they would experience manifestations of God's presence and they would be taught and empowered for mission. Initially, the saints heard God calling them to build a temple in Independence, Missouri, but violent opposition suspended that dream. And instead, Kirtland, Ohio became the first place where the saints succeeded in bringing to life their vision of a temple. Some saints worshiping in the Kirtland temple in the 1830s had visions of angels or prophets, or the risen Christ himself, encouraging the saints in their desires to do God's work. Priesthood ministers were schooled in the temple. 
and in special worship gatherings, they sought an outpouring of the Spirit to strengthen them as they went out into the world to serve. For that first generation of our faith community, the Kirtland Temple was a place for encountering the divine and developing disciples to serve. As such, the Kirtland Temple was the model for the temple we finally built a century and a half later in Independence. Doctrine and Covenants 163, paragraph 8, calls us to make the Independence Temple what the Kirtland Temple was built to be, a sacred center of worship, education, and discipleship preparation through which the church throughout the world is revived and equipped for more effective ministry. In April 1887, members of our faith community gathered in Kirtland Temple for the Church's General Conference. During that conference, Prophet President Joseph Smith III brought forth words of counsel, which conference delegates voted to accept as divine guidance for the church. Those words of counsel became Doctrine and Covenants Section 119. Among the words of counsel that the church accepted on that occasion were these. All are called according to the gifts of God unto them. The conference delegates who first heard those words in 1887 in Kirtland Temple did not yet see, metaphorically speaking, the places beyond their horizon to which those words were calling them. In 1887, we accepted as inspired teaching that all are called according to the gifts of God unto them. Yet for nearly another 100 years after that, our faith community systematically excluded women from calls to priesthood ministry. In 1984, the spirit of the voice of the spirit gave new words of counsel, instructing the church to recognize women's priesthood callings. Those new words of counsel, Doctrine and Covenants 156, pointed us back to the words found in Doctrine and Covenants 119. I say to you now, as I have said in the past, that all are called according to the gifts of God, which has been given them. Therefore, do not wonder that women of the church are being called to priesthood responsibilities. Today, around the world, there are women who are blessing others' lives through ministry priesthood ministry in the community of Christ. Stacy Krem's appointment earlier this year as president-designate of the church means that there is now no form of priesthood ministry in our faith community to which women have not been called. Words of counsel given in the Kirtland Temple in 1887 laid a foundation on which all those women would now build their faithful service. Two of my great-great-great-grandfathers, Uriah Rambi and William Van Opstall, helped build the Kirtland Temple. My grandfather, Paul Arpensinger, wrote a poem titled Kirtland Temple. It will be read by two of his children, Dale Organ Singer and Martha Harper. In addition, the music ministry provider are descendants of Uriah and William. Here is the Kerman Temple, built by the hand of man, built by sacrifice and labor, built by God's command. Its walls are strong and stable, an emblem of God's great love. A gift to us by people who accepted the gift from above. What is your, what answer, is your answer, my people? What, what is, is your, your gift, gift today? today? 
to a God that is anxious and willing to bless without delay. In 1837, during a worship service in the Curtin Temple, Prophet President Joseph Smith Jr. leaned over to Apostle Heber C. Kimball as they sat together in the pulpits above the communion table. Joseph told Heber that the Spirit was whispering to him that Heber should go on a mission to England. Just days afterward, Heber said goodbye to his wife Violet and their children and departed for England, the first missionary from our faith community sent to minister outside North America. Over a century later, in 1959, high priests from our faith community gathered in Curtin Temple for a conference. Among those present were Apostles Blair Jensen and Charles Neff, who were preparing to travel to Japan and Korea to visit members of our faith community there and to consider how to expand the church's evangelistic ministries in Asia. As conference attendees worshiped together in the Curtin Temple, presiding evangelist Roy Cheville felt inspired to speak prophetically in the voice of Christ. His words, his words assured apostles Jensen and Neff that Christ would be with them on their journeys as they went like the Apostle Paul long ago, to serve people they did not know. Decades after Roy Cheville spoke those prophetic words, individuals from Asian nations where Apostles Jensen and Neff ministered served at Curtin Temple as guides through Word Service Corps. In the 21st century, words of counsel have taught us that God is urgently calling Community of Christ to become a global family. Doctrine and Covenants 162 urges us to listen carefully to the many testimonies of those around the world who have been led into the fellowship of the community of Christ so that through the richness of cultures, we can see the gospel with new eyes and grasp it with freshness of spirit. This call is not new. God has been calling our faith community to become a global family since the earliest days of our history. The Curtin Temple is one place where members of our faith community in different generations have heard and accepted that call. Less than two years after its construction, the Kirtland Temple became a site of conflict as internal divisions tore apart our young faith community. Reportedly, over the course of our history, we have become a church divided, a body wounded. As a result, the Kirtland Temple has become a focus of competition and jealousy and resentment for members of rival Latter-day Saint fellowships. We in Community of Christ have contributed to this ill feeling in periods of our history when we have used our ownership of the Kirtland Temple to trumpet that we are the true Latter-day Saints. In the late 20th century, Community of Christ was called to build a temple in the in independence that would be dedicated to the pursuit of peace. Doctrine and Covenants 161 calls us to become a people of the temple. Those who feel conflict yet extend the hand of reconciliation. During the final few decades of Community of Christ stewardship of the Kirtland Temple, we have worked to make that house of God a space for peacemaking and recon reconciliation across lines of religious division. We have welcomed to the Kirtland Temple pilgrims from various Latter-day Saint fellowships. We have made the temple available to them as a place of worship. We organized or hosted in the Kirtland Temple events that brought members of rival fellowships together, events such as meetings of the Mormon History Association, Sunstone, and the John Whitmer Historical Association, the Emma Smith Hymn Festival, held annually started in the early 2000s, and devotional services held at Christmas time and Easter. 
At these events, members of Community of Christ sang and prayed alongside members of the LDS Church and the Restoration Branches. We welcomed as worshipers in the Kirtland Temple, people who had difficult relationships with their own communities of faith, such as LGBT members of the LDS Church. And the temple hosted events that fostered religious goodwill even more widely, such as the Kirtland City's interfaith Thanksgiving service. In all of these ways, Community of Christ tried to use the Kirtland Temple for the mission that Doctrine and Covenants 163 teaches us is at the heart of our purpose as a people of faith to help the living Christ heal and reconcile and restore righteous relationships among people. If you have a candle at home for the prayer for peace, now is the time to light it. And you will forgive me while I momentarily break up some conflict between dogs and my place. We gather tonight to give thanks for ways in which the Kirtland Temple has helped generations of our faith community experience God's grace and advance the mission of Jesus Christ. We gather in gratitude, but also in grief. The end of our faith community's stewardship of the Kirtland Temple was for many of us a sudden shock. Some of us are still in sorrow. Some of us are angry or bitter. Some of us are perhaps even experiencing something of despair. Sorrow, anger, bitterness, despair. None of these are invalid responses to our faith community's loss. At the same time, they are wounding responses. These are responses that may lead us to say or do things that wound others. And these responses hinder us from experiencing the joy that God created human beings to have. So as I light this peace candle on this occasion, I pray that where the passing from our hands of the Kirtland Temple has caused sorrow or anger or bitterness or despair, there will come in time to be peace and healing and reconciliation. I do not know exactly what peace or healing or reconciliation will look like in this situation. I do not know exactly how or when they will come, but I pray that they will come. I pray it in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join me in a sung prayer for peace. And may your church build bridges. We'll sing this along with a pre-recorded piano accompaniment. There won't be a vocal, but start singing when the words appear in the spring. The song will play through once, and then we'll start singing the second time through.
Lexi and I are now going to take a few minutes to read some of the stories that have been posted in the chat during the service. Between now and the end of the service, feel free to continue to post in the chat experiences you've had involving the Kirtland Temple that have nourished you spiritually, formed you as a disciple, or equipped you for ministry. From Jennifer Redfern. I'm also very thankful for all of you who dedicated countless hours maintaining these historic sites and providing sacred stories for all to hear. I was so happy to be able to visit Kirtland on a few occasions. The moments were powerful and boosted my soul. From Paul DeBarth, our neighbor had been abused and disadvantaged through life. Her husband would not let her join the church and she waited many years before he died and she was baptized. Her confirmation in the temple was a highlight of her life and of my parents who sharing with her motivated her walk with Christ. In addition, to hear my wife Rena sing in the temple was to hear an angel. From Nancy Hadsell, my favorite memory, playing Spirit of God Like a Fire is Burning in Kirtland Temple on a historic sites bus tour. From Gail Mengel, our family lived in Northeast Ohio for almost 16 years, and we were very active in, the, in then the Kirtland Stake. We loved attending worships, meetings, and conferences in the temple. I was a soloist back then and sang many times in the Kirtland Temple. Treasure all the memories. From William Mines. My first visit as a non-member, the Spirit said, welcome home. I was baptized two years later. David Wilson reflected on the opportunity to serve communion at the temple on last fall's historic sites bus trip. Judith Luffman, sorry, Luffman. Living in Kirtland for six and a half years provided many special opportunities to worship in the building and volunteer. A special memory is the way the Kirtland community supported ecumenical worship services. From Claudia Schooler. 50 years ago, I heard old time minister Earl Curry end a Kirtland Temple sermon, the best is yet to come. From Pam Robison. So many, many memories. From attending reunion in the temple as a young person to having a powerful blessing experience with my husband that prepared us to be able to cope with my diagnosis of MS three months later, to a wonderful retreat with the congregation. Listen, O oh people of the restoration, you who have become a prophetic people, embodying in your life together the ministries of the temple. Listen to the voice that echoes across the eons of time and yet speaks anew in this moment. Listen to the voice, for it calls you once again to the great and marvelous work of building the peaceable kingdom, even Zion, on behalf of the one whose name you claim. Listen carefully to your own sacred journey as a people, for it has taught you many things you must know for the journey yet to come. Recognize that you have been given a foundation of faithful service, even as you build a foundation for what is yet to be. Pray with me. So many thank yous already uttered on this March 27th anniversary day, God. So many thank yous yet unspoken. In silence beyond words, some simply lift their eyes and arms in gratitude. Kirtland is your place, God, and we were then and are now people of the temple 
generous givers, creative planners, dedicated workers, people with a history, people in mission, people seeking identity, people longing for your presence in a world that so easily forgets, people still believing the dream that brought pilgrims to Kirtland many years ago. Oh, the gratitude we owe to those who envisioned, those who built, and those who preserved. We treasure memories of Kirtland, God. The place we stood when you caused our bosom to burn in the upper court, that pew box in the lower court where we sat to hear a prophet president of our time, his words mingling with those spoken from that same pulpit almost 200 years ago. The day we stood before the large green door asking entrance in, praying as the hymn says, incline your ear to us and grant us your peace. The times we knelt on that well-trod floor, heard the words, bless and sanctify these emblems to all who partake, then reached our hands to receive the sacrament served to thousands through so many decades. We watched the glow of evening sunlight slant through sanctuary windows in the lower court. We walked the gardens blanketed in winter snow, the flowering colors of spring, the muted golds of autumn. We climbed to the tower and looked out on the town on a summer night. We crawled in the tight spaces below the sanctuary, ducked under the support beams and rubbed a hand over rough foundation stone. Those places will continue to be preserved and we are so grateful. Kirtland is your place, Holy One, and we are its people. The spirit of God like a fire is burning and will not be snuffed out. Community of Christ sings that dedicatory hymn in Swahili and Lingala and Chibemba and Indibeli and Efik in towns and villages across Africa. In Korean, in Dutch, in German, in Spanish of Spain, the Caribbean and the Americas, in French accents of Europe, Africa and the Pacific, in Tahitian, in Polynesia, and in English to the British Isles and Ireland and all its other derivations around the globe, from India to Fiji to Belize to Australia. We sing the song that has shaped our We Are One, We Are Many international faith community and will continue to do so. And yes, once again, we are grateful. On that March 27, until this anniversary day, your fire could not and will not be contained, dear God. Through the pain and loss caused by others and through our own faith community's errors and short-sightedness, the fire still burns. It's far too late to contain it now. You are our story, God. You are the song we sing at Kirtland. The temple was and is a foundation of faithful service. But there is a more unshakable foundation upon which Kirtland and many other places have been built. In words of the prophet Isaiah, we are assured that the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord. Long ago, you laid the foundation of the earth, God, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you endure. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water, and the word says the hymn. When the earth grows old and wears out, when nations and cultures die, when buildings eventually crumble, the eternal one is the foundation on which all foundations are laid and the foundation cannot be shaken. There is something immovable, unchangeable, unshakable, eternal, which becomes manifest in our passing 
and in the crumbling of our world. On the boundaries of the finite, the infinite becomes visible. In the light of the eternal, the transitoriness of the temporal appears. We pray your blessing now, Ancient of Days. You are our firm foundation in grief and in joy. You are our present and our future. You are the spirit that burns the fire in our bones that cannot be put out. Amen. Thank you, David, for that beautiful, deeply meaningful prayer. One that is written on our hearts tonight. As we bring this worship service to a close, thank you again to everyone who took part. Tonight's service has been, in a sense, a farewell to the Kirtland Temple, as Community of Christ now leaves the building in others' hands. But the end of our stewardship of the Kirtland Temple does not mean the end of our relationship with that temple. We can still visit the Kirtland Temple as pilgrims. Community of Christ will have future opportunities to worship in the Kirtland Temple. We will continue bringing bus tours to the temple and seeing the spirit of God like a fire is burning from deep within our soul. Most importantly, we still have in our possession the blessings God has given our faith community over generations through this temple. Those are the gifts that no one, no one can take from us. It is up to us to make use of those gifts. Our service this evening will end with ascending forth, adapted from portions of the dedicatory prayer for the Kirtland Temple, which Joseph Smith Jr. read on March 27, 1836. After the ascending forth has been read, we invite you to sing along with two verses of the Spirit of God like a fire is burning. We will sing verse one as it was sung at the Kirtland Temple dedication in 1836, 188 years ago. Then we will sing verse three as adapted for Community of Christ in more recent times by Andrew Bolton and Randall Pratt. The words to the hymn will appear on your screen and we'll sing to an accompaniment prepared for tonight's service by Daniel Harmon. After the closing hymn, we will all leave this online space in silence. Thanks be to your name, Lord God of Israel. You keep covenant and show mercy to your servants. You commanded your servants to build a house to your name in this place. And now you see, O Lord, that your servants have done as you have commanded. We ask you to accept this house, the workmanship of our hands. You know that out of our poverty, we have given our substance to build a house to your name where the Son of Man might manifest himself to his people. We ask that your glory may rest on your people and on this, your house, which we now dedicate to you, that your holy presence may be continually in this house and that all who enter the Lord's house may feel your power. Grant that all who worship in this house may be taught words of wisdom out of the best books, that they may seek learning by study and by faith, and that they may grow up in you. We ask that your servants may go forth from this house clothed with your power, and that from this place they may carry glorious tidings to the ends of the earth so that the ends of the earth may know that you have put forth your hand to fulfill what you have spoken by your mouths, sorry, by the mouths of the prophet. Remember all your church, O Lord, with all their families and connections, with all their sick and afflicted ones. Remember all the poor and meek of the earth, 
so that the kingdom you have set up may fill the whole earth. Oh, hear, oh, hear, oh, hear us, O oh Lord. Answer these petitions and accept the dedication of this house to you. Help us by your spirit's power to mingle our voices with the angels around your throne in acclamations of praise, singing Hosanna to God and the Lamb, and let your saints shout for joy, amen and amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 